Uh, you also make the point in your book that the West is not only failing to react to this attack, uh, but even some of uh, uh, the Western leaders are joining in the attack, uh, yes. self-bashing. Why is that? Is there a, a, a common feeling of guilt? Uh, what? Why are we failing to react, to recognize and react to this attack? Uh, I, I think one reason is that it plays on people's um, good side. For instance, as I said before, uh, no sensible person would say there's nothing we've ever done in our historical past of which we should be in any way ashamed. Almost nobody reasonable could say that. Everybody knows that history was bloody for everyone and was some things went better than others. Um but if you're a certain type of politician in particular, um, you see a little bit of historical ground here, which you can apologize for and gain some points for in the present. Let me give you an example. Um, in Canada, uh, we've had a number of political leaders now, uh, but including the current prime minister, Justin Trudeau, who is very, very fond of apologizing for the Canadian past very fond of uh, apologizing for things that happened centuries before even little Justin was born. Um, by contrast, he finds it not just difficult, but impossible to apologize for anything he has done himself, which has been provably bad. So for instance, he will never apologize for the way in which he treated protesters in uh, Ottawa last year. He will never apologize for that. He smirks his way through any question about it, he grotesquely abused the human rights of thousands of Canadians, but he will never apologize for that. By contrast, he is first in line to apologize for things over which he had no involvement. Now, in my view, this is, in his case, an almost entirely cynical political exercise. It's to make himself look virtuous, to make himself look good, to make himself look kind and much more. Let me give you another example. If in the British context, a British politician was to say, and thank goodness we haven't had very much of this among British leaders, we have had some of it, but not, not as much as in Canada. If a British leader were to stand up and make, I don't know, an apology for some aspect of colonialism, that politician would have had nothing to do with colonialism. So what are they trying to do? And the answer is, almost entirely it is to burnish some credential for themselves. Um, my view, and I say this in the war in the West, is that when we get to historical apology or historical restitution, we're in very dodgy terrain because the person who is apologizing has not done any wrong. And the person being apologized to is not a person themselves who was wronged. Uh, there was just this weaker story, it rather amused me, of a BBC journalist who's got herself a huge amount of publicity, not coincidentally, I think, in her own eyes, uh, by discovering that some of her ancestors were involved in the slave trade in Granada. And she has made repeated trips and is making another one, I think accompanied by a lot of press again. That's not in the old, in the old days, if you, if you wanted to make an act of charity or restitution, you did it privately. That used to be the deal. Now you do it in the full glare of cameras so that, so that everyone can see. Um, and this BBC journalist has found out that her family were involved in the slave trade. She's making, making repeated trips to Granada to, 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 to apologize to, 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 to who? Nobody there has been involved in the slave trade. In fact, many of the people on the island will be the descendants of people who were themselves slavers. But what is really going on here? This is an existential question for the journalist in, 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 that I mentioned, but it does no actual good because, as I say, the person who is apologizing has done no wrong and the person accepting the apology and sometimes accepting or demanding the money is not somebody themselves who has suffered. And besides, as I say at another point in the book, when you get to this whole issue of historical reparations, who is to say? You know, um, uh, I'm not by any means diminishing the, the, the crime of slavery, but, you know, did a working class man in the north of England in the 19th century have very much freedom more than a slave if he worked in a mill 
and his average life expectancy was about 36 or 38. Not much, no, it wasn't all that much. I mean, you can't really say that person was very free. Um, he was freer than a slave, yes. Uh, but would the descendants of such a person have a right to demand some kind of historical restitution? Down the line from where we're going, yes. Yes, they would. Um, so so we're in a very dangerous game where, where, where the West is being portrayed as the sole victimizer and the rest of the world is being portrayed as, as, as meek victims of Western aggression. 